at which point in our society where we say it is better for the organization to win, but the individuals that make up that organization, they should not win. You should have the organization's best interest at heart, but your interest should be put on the back burner. Where did we get that mentality from? BWB, bandwagon bus, that's right. It's your man's Harry Billion. Please do me a favor and smash that subscribe button. Make sure to give me the thumbs up and don't forget to hit that bell notification so that you can get the videos as soon as I upload it to YouTube. All right, family, I gotta go ahead and get into this video real quick so that's all the business I got. You know what time it is. Let's work. What's going on, Buff Nation and my BWBs, my bandwagon buffs? I hope you are having a great week. In this video, man, I have to start this one off by saying we understand not everybody that has criticism of Coach Prime is a hater, all right? We understand that commentary works in a way where sometimes you have to use information, whether it's negative, positive, or whatever it is, to make a point. So we get it. There are people that are critical and they are pointing out specific information, specific data in order to make a statement or to make a point. So not everybody that has criticism of Coach Prime or the CU Buffs is always a hater. But there are people who you just know are just pure haters. If you are a Coach Prime supporter and a rational Coach Prime supporter, you try to listen to people when they're talking. You try to understand what it is they're saying. You try to decipher and understand what they're saying, what angle they have. You're trying your best to try to see if they're a hater or if they're just talking football talk. At a certain point in their conversation or whatever they're saying, you start realizing that this person is not no supporter. This person is a pure hater. Like, for real. So this writer wrote an article. The article said the anti-coach prime. You know what? Let's just go to the article because I'll allow you to make up your own mind on what you think this is. We don't want to highlight every article that seems like it's hating, but this one I wanted to do because Colorado's doing pretty well in basketball. Colorado's doing pretty well in other sports. And this writer took his time to contrast coach prime and one of the other coaches at CU. Let's go ahead and go to the article so we can see what this guy was talking about. Let's go. Desi Bang, what up? What it is, what it does, what it's gonna be, brother. Now, I wanna start with the writer because I want you to know the person that's writing this stuff so that you can keep in mind who's writing this stuff and why he's saying what he's saying. The writer's name is Mark Knudsen. Mark Knudsen is a veteran of 12 years in professional baseball. In 1993, he became the first Colorado native to play for the Colorado Rockies. After retiring, Mark turned to sports writing and broadcasting, working in radio and television. He currently contributes to MHS.com, WoodyPage.com, and has a podcast on www.bleav.com. Com. So that's Mark Knudsen. Now, if it's Mark Knudsen, fine. If you know Mark in the Colorado area and you know that his name is Mark Knudsen or Mark Knudsen, correct me in the comments. Let's get to the story. So Mark has this story as strike one. Tad Boyle is the anti-coach prime of the University of Colorado. I've already read this and the way it reads, it feels like this conversation is a conversation that a lot of people are having off script behind the scenes. It feels like this is a sentiment that is ingrained somewhere in the DNA of the sports writers and the sports talkers, the analysts in Colorado. This is what this feels like. You can hear it as you listen to this story. Let's go. I don't want nobody to associate any of this story of anything that Tad Boyle is doing over there and how he feels about Coach Prime to this story. All right. Just keep that in mind. In this football upset sports market, the playoff starved bottom dwelling Denver Broncos still have a dedicated year round radio show on the biggest station in town. Meanwhile, the world champion Denver Nuggets have to share airtime rightfully with the other sports teams in the market, including the sub mediocre pro football team. Shortly after their championship parade last June, including on the station owned by the owner, so everyone could get minute to minute updates on what was and wasn't happening at Broncos training camp. This horribly skewed, obsessive coverage of football also permeates in Boulder, where the head coach of the sub-mediocre football program at CU successfully self-promoted his way to Sportsman of the Year honors, despite going 4-8 and eight and missing the postseason. Meanwhile, the best men's program at the University of Colorado, with apologies to the skiing and cross-country teams, led by the best basketball coach the school has ever employed, flies under the radar most 
most of the year, right up until they set a new school record for wins in a season and proceed to make a statement during March Madness. While the Buffs football coach was being ridiculed for his admission that he's too high profile to be bothered to travel off campus to recruit high school players, the leader of the Buffs basketball program was coaching his homegrown senior point guard and watching NBA bound KJ Simpson step up on the sport's biggest stage and win in the postseason. Simply put, Tad Boyle is the anti Deion Sanders, and CU is fortunate to have him. Boyle is in a self promoter. He hasn't given himself a nickname. He doesn't hawk sunglasses, almonds, or fast food on TV. He doesn't make outlandish claims about being disrespected, nor does he manufacture conflicts with opposing coaches. He doesn't make it about him or his brand ever. He doesn't require that the school's biggest athletic sponsor pay him instead of the school to promote health care. More importantly, he doesn't kick players off the team when things don't go well. Boyle built relationships in his basketball program the old-fashioned way. Everybody just keep talking about the old-fashioned way. Oh boy. And yes, he ventures off campus to recruit. The Colorado native came to Boulder more than a decade ago, telling everyone who will listen that CU was his dream job and that he wasn't planning on using the buffs as a stepping stone to his alma mater, Kansas, or anywhere else. And he hasn't. Boyle has planted roots and built a foundation that doesn't skirt the rules and doesn't depend on hype videos or the promise of NIL riches to build a winner. This guy's saying a lot, boy. <laughs> I'm so ready to unleash. I'm going to have to take this in strides, man. I'm telling you, he is saying a lot right here, boy. Who skirting the rules? Wow. So Coach Prime is knowing that skirting the rules. Coach Prime is skirting the rules. He is an advocate for playing fair and not bothering nobody. I'm so ready to unleash on this guy. It's not funny, but let's keep going. Assuming his job is safe and for whatever ridiculous reason, there are buff supporters out there who continue to want him on the proverbial hot seat. Boyer will have to do an old-fashioned roster rebuild this offseason, not because of failures and the misguided impulse to kick everyone he deems not worthy of his coaching off the team, but because he's likely sending his best three players to the professional ranks, including one freshman, Cody Williams, who could be the first American-born player to be drafted this summer. And then he'll go about his business in his very professional manner. No over-the-top social media blitz or hype videos. Just the same hard work he's always done. Yes, he'll have to include some NIL dollars just because that's the era we are in now. But he'll do that by the book too and without the help of rap stars and a promotions team. So wait a minute, bruh. <laughs> So it's not by the book if you ask your famous friends for help? Uh, what we talking about? <laughs> you know what? I ain't ready yet. Like I said, once I'm done with this, I might have to come back on each section and give my perspective. Because this is kind of crazy here. There's no doubt the old school approach is collectively struggling right now. Huh? You, you, you think? <laughs> you think? <laughs> Fandom wants the flash and sizzle of social media and consistent hype. But most importantly, fans want to win. And winning, now self-promotion, is what Tad Boyle does best. God <laughs> uh, about it. God to about it. Mark K. <laughs> so we got to take this all in stride, guys. We have to take all of this in stride. We have to understand as Desi Banks over there chopping it up with Coach Prime, it's not just rappers. It's also social media influencers. It's other people that are in the culture. Coach Prime understands the times that we are in. He understands how to leverage everything, all of his relationships, all of his resources to accomplish the goals that he has. And he understands that you got to use everything at your arsenal to make sure that you accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. Keep in mind that football is the number one sport in America. All right. Off the rip, we got to understand that football is the number one sport in America. Football program sometimes literally pays the bills for a lot of things that the university partakes in, like the university has. Okay. So let's go in. Mark is speaking for not just himself, but he's one of the bold ones that's going to step out there that's in that Colorado ecosystem and let it be known that he is no friend of Coach Prime, no support supporter of Coach Prime, he's just going to pretty much just emotionally vomit on a page or on a specific writing, which is kind of crazy. So let's go ahead and take it stride by stride. Let's take it section by section. Let's take the first section. All right. 
Who? Good catch, good tackle. Who that? Who that? First of all, the anti-coach prime. So that's kind of weird. I'm the data guy, and I like to make sure that I put things into perspective when I speak. So let's define what anti means. Because we say the word all the time. We think about antichrist. We say something anti, something's opposing. But what does anti really mean? Opposed to or against. I'm anti the abuse of drinking and the hassle that it causes. I'm anti. I'm opposed to it. Adjective. Opposed. Neither side in the debate. Whether anti or pro has offered a particularly convincing case all right now what is the noun of anti noun is a person opposed to a particular policy activity or idea a shadow army of antis who endanger your sport Mm. It's Coach Prime endangering. It makes it seem like Coach Boyle is against Coach Prime's practices. Coach Boyle is against Coach Prime's ideas of how he approaches life, coaching, etc. It seems a little disingenuous because it's almost like he's trying to pin Coach Boyle against Coach Prime. They are at the same university. They are trying to make sure that they bring light to the university in their own special way, in their own unique way. Way. One would not try to put anybody under the bus or try to say your approach is bad. I don't like your approach. I don't care about what you're doing. I think you're doing it the wrong way. Blah, 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 blah. It seems like Mark had a conversation with Coach Boyle and Coach Boyle's host the same sentiment. It seems weird. I just want to let y'all know this is not the case. This is not what we know. Coach Boyle has not come out to say anything to the matter and we don't know his position. I'm sure Coach Boyle appreciates the attention that CU is getting and that's going to help in even his own recruiting let's get that off the top coach prime was also a baseball player both of them were baseball players coach prime was a baseball player mark was a baseball player baseball is known as america's sport baseball does not get the kind of attention that football gets in america football from a marketing standpoint is a gladiator sport it's the type of sports that men have to hit each other they're going into battle there's sometimes there's blood death and all kinds of things that people really love football is the number one sport from a money standpoint in america America. I'm sure some of the dugout conversations that they had about advertising, about money, and talking about different sports and how much coverage they get. I'm sure he probably has some layover resentment about football and why football gets so much love. Let's just take, for example, the fire department in New York and the police department. The fire department is loved. The police department, not so much. <laughs> All right? That argument has been going on for a very long time. Baseball is America's pastime and all that good stuff that they say about baseball. But baseball doesn't get the kind of attention that football gets. I mean, baseball plays like 100,000 games. Like, come on now. Anyways, I understand where he comes from when he's talking about football and his resentment on how much people love football. I get that part. Whatever he feels about the Nuggets and the Broncos, I'm going to let you Colorado people handle that. I'm sure that's a conversation you guys are having over there on Pearl Street and other places in Boulder. But let's go ahead and get into the Coach Prime stuff. This is what I want to talk about. Let's take this first statement right here. The head coach of the sub-mediocre football program at CU successfully self-promoted his way to Sportsman of the Year honors, despite going 4-8 and eight and missing the postseason. Everybody ain't for you, man. I'm telling you, everybody's not for you. So you inherit a program that's 1-11 that has been in a downward spiral for many years. You inherit a bunch of players who are not up to par when it comes to playing the type of football that you need to play in order for you to be in the championship talk every year or at least for you to be in the bowl talk every year. So you have to do your best to try to turn this roster around in a very short period of time. When he landed, it was shortly after that. It was spring and then football season started. So he didn't have a whole bunch of time to come out here and play Mr. Nice Guy. Coach Prime had to come in there and he had to clean house and do it right away. We talk about this all the time. Some people don't really understand it. Writers and people like Mark, they want something to be done and they want the winning to happen, but they usually don't understand what it takes to make that happen. And let's keep in mind, the same thing will happen behind closed doors, but what Coach Prime does is show you how it's done. He will put it on film to show you the hard decisions that must be made. Like a new president of the United States gets into office he sees everything in disarray and he has to make some changes right away to get everything back on track to make the right decisions imagine if we had a video camera in the white house and seeing how some of these decisions are made i'm not comparing the two i just want to give you a perspective all right so he brings the cameras in and then says i want you to look at what happens when a ceo or when somebody is brought into a dysfunctional program and has to make changes to turn things around to start winning again we're privy to that because this is his 
his process, this is what he does. You would never know the decisions. You would never know what goes on behind the scenes and how people turn around programs, whether it's at the professional level or at the lower level colleges, even in high school. You would never know that if Coach Prime did not give you these cameras in those meetings. Make no mistake, CEOs and people are brought in and they make these type of decisions all the time. Let's just get that out the way. When he says he promoted his way to Sportsman of the Year and despite going four and eight, that's one thing that I want you to understand and I've said this before on the TLP live show also. Coach Prime is literally rescuing college football from the perspective of money. People don't understand that college football is a business also. Even though it is college, college football needs money to survive just like any other sport. Look at these jerseys. They have Nike logos on them. When you get Phil Knight who says Coach Prime or Deion Sanders has rescued the sport, he's talking about it from a business standpoint. Phil Knight gets into these meetings. He's briefed on things that are going on from a business perspective, from a money perspective how can we continue to sponsor these schools and make sure that we can come out with a profit this is not a charity this is for profit nike is for profit so how can we continue to put out the amount of money that we put out the jerseys the cliques and all of these things how can we continue to do that and continue to lose money so he gets into these meetings i believe i was at the oregon game when he says that Deion sanders aka coach prime has rescued the sport he's talking about that from a standpoint of business from a standpoint of the money if you're telling me that this guy has come in and because of who he is, because of his self-promotion, because of his stature, how separate he is from Tad Boyle, because of all of that, he has brought in money, infused money into college football as a whole. We haven't even gotten to Colorado yet, but because of him, college football is re-energized. College football has new energy, new fan base, people who never watch football. Because of him, the sport is survived. That has to be taken into consideration you have to consider that when it comes to the sportsman of the year i don't care how you look at it take everything take all of the coaches take everyone who was considered for the award and let's say who had the most impact on changing the sport the landscape of the sport understanding the new landscape of college football nil recruiting made the most impact the team did not win more games to mark it doesn't matter how many games a team won last year for coach prime to deserve that award if the team could have been eight and four or even went nine and three mark would have wrote something where coach prime did not deserve that award but all things considered who deserved the award who do you think deserved that award infused 113 million dollars we'll say that again infused 113 million dollars into the school one coach because of him, applications have gone up 50%. Think about his impact on the school. Think about his impact on the global scale. Bring in people from South Africa, Australia, all around the globe. People are watching football. Think about that. All around the globe now, people are watching football. Not to say that they didn't watch football before. I'm just saying, just think about the fact that now, new blood and more people are coming to the sport now and are watching and are paying attention because of Coach Prime. The economy, the local economy in Boulder has changed. More money into Colorado. People are paying attention now. More African Americans are now applying to go to the school. Think about that. Out of 32 or 31,000 students, only 800 of those students were black. 2.7%. Think about who made more impact than that and tell me who deserved that award over coach prime not just football but sportsman of the year if we're arguing sportsman of the year think about who made the most impact that's all i'm saying take out the fact that you don't like him personally right take out the fact that you think that his self-promotion is egregious and you hate it you hate the fact that he loves to get his money you hate the fact that he goes for the bag and he likes to make sure that he gets compensated for everything that he deserves or everything that he's worth he knows his worth and he wants to get his worth take that out of the equation and tell me who's the person that's most deserving of the honor of sportsman of the year we can have that argument i'll wait actually i can't wait i ain't got that kind of time i can't wait because i know you ain't got no answer let's go to the next one i think we got to give flowers and kudos to the women's basketball coach and the men's basketball coach we have to give these people flowers without always pinning them against coach prime coach prime's system is different his policy the way that he moves is different from these people but these people are at the same university trying to accomplish the same goal which is to bring championships to colorado which is to put colorado out there we got to give jr Payne credit for what she's done for the colorado women's basketball team 
Coach Prime's daughter is on this team. She's a walk-on. She deserves some credit. The ski team deserves some credit for bringing home the natty. The other coaches deserve credit as well. We can give these people flowers without crapping on Coach Prime. If their process is different, if they're winning, that's great. On Saturday, they're going to be playing Iowa. All right, they're going to be playing Kalen in the Sweet 16. So they're winning. Coach Prime is not. And why is he getting all this attention? We can't keep doing that. We have to abstain from using every opportunity opportunity that we get to crap on coach prime in his process because the story is going to change when he starts putting w on that board what would you say then Ty Boyer is the NT Deion Sanders, and CU is fortunate to have him. CU is fortunate to have him, and CU is also fortunate to have Coach Prime. Coach Prime has infused a lot of money into Colorado, the university. Coach Prime has done a lot for the university. My So African clothing brand has a saying, we can love us without hating anyone else, all right? We can love Coach Tad Boyle without hating on Coach Prime. His system is different. His approach is different, and I don't want anybody to be like, oh, what has Tad Tad Boyle done. Tad Boyle didn't bring no money into CU, blah, blah, blah. I don't want nobody to have an anti Tad Boyle sentiment because of this crazy writer who just doesn't know how to praise one person without bringing the other person down. That is his shortcoming. That shouldn't be our approach. We don't have to be against Tad Boyle because we are for Coach Prime. We can give praise to RJ Payne. We can give praise to Tad Boyle. We can give praise to all the other coaches that are trying their best to win games at Colorado. Coach Prime is the easy target because his approach is different. You're telling me because of Tad Boyle's quiet, old school approach to recruiting and building a team and stuff like that is more appreciated than Coach Prime's in your face bombastic approach and bringing in millions of dollars is more appreciated than you're crazy. Both approaches are appreciated. Trust me, we don't have to put one down to elevate the other. Boyle's isn't a self promoter. It's okay. I think it's totally okay. Whether you're a self promoter or not, whatever path your life has led you, whatever that is, that's fine. Enjoy that. Why do we hate self promotion? Tell me why we hate self-promotion, especially if you are successful. Because everything about social media is called self-promotion. Everything we do, when you go to a new place to work, you're self-promoting. Your resume is a self-promotion. You want the bigger job. You want to be able to write for a bigger platform. Everything in our society is about self-promotion. But when you're the biggest, people are going to come after you. Every single thing that we do is about self-promotion. Look at my platform. Look at what I'm doing. This is what I've done. You're trying to promote self in order for you to get some somewhere on the plate that the kids eat on at CU it has the CU logo why does it have that if a camera lands on it we're planting that logo in your brain guess what the kids that are eating on that plate is also planting the logo in their brain when they leave here that logo is going to be on their brain you have clients inside and you have clients outside in the company when I used to work at BNH everything we did BNH logo was right in front of us you have clients inside and you have clients outside because of promotion you got to understand promotion because you don't like it and you can't be successful at at it like coach prime it doesn't mean that self-promotion is wrong do you want the organization to win more than the people at the organization who makes the organizations this is the idea of nil i want people to understand this this is the reason why we got nil in the first place because people like mark don't seem to understand that the organizations are promoting themselves to get more money to get in a bigger market and all of these things but people like mark they have this antiquated way of thinking that let the organization win but the the person cannot win. The person should not win. The second that the person says, I want to benefit from my name, image, and likeness being used to make you money as an organization, then that person is wrong. At which point in our society where we say it is better for the organization to win, but the individuals that make up that organization, they should not win. You should have the organization's best interest at heart, but your interest should be put on the back burner. Where did we get that mentality from? From. Where did that come from? I want to understand it. We crap on the players when they leave the organization, but then when the organization tells the person they no longer want them and throw them to the wayside, we don't say anything. Saquon Barkley. Saquon was one of the best running backs. I think he came from Penn State. The New York Giants got him. They didn't know how to use him. He finally said, you know what? I'm up out of here. I'm going to the Eagles. One of the Barber brothers, Tiki Barber, his brother, or whichever one it was, says, you are dead to us. You're dead to us. You know, the organization can get rid of anybody and nobody says anything. So when the players make moves or when the individuals are going for themselves, understanding that I'm going to go for me because I know that this organization can crap on me, get rid of me anytime they don't want me. So while I'm here, I'm going to take full advantage of myself and what my worth is. I'm going to take full advantage of that. 
Democrats. We always blame the individuals, but never the organizations that do exactly the same thing. Why is that? That's a genuine question that I want to ask. Where did that mentality originate from? If I'm the name that the organization is using to be great, then I believe that my interests should be put in the forefront as well, should be aligned with the university's interests, and I should be compensated for that as well on different levels. And nobody should be upset because that's what business is all about. But for some odd reason, we've been manipulated and we've been bamboozled to put the organization first, but the individual second. I don't get it. Let's keep going. The Colorado native came to border more than a decade ago telling everyone who will listen that CU was his dream job and that he wasn't planning on using the buffs as a stepping stone to his alma mater, Kansas, or anywhere else. And he hasn't. This part right here could be like Jackson State. It's the same sentiment of putting the organization over the individual. In America, this is how we address issues. This is how we deal with issues because the the organization should be put first and the individual second. You have to be selfless and put the organization above your own self-interest. I find that to be at its highest level hypocritical, preposterous, any more other words that I can think about. It's crazy thinking. We know situations where coaches have done a good job and they've been fired. Uh, Texas A&M rings a bell, anyone? When you do a good job and they still fire you because you're just not meeting certain criteria that they're looking for, they can still fire you. Universities, organizations, organizations they use people the same way people try to use organizations just as well if the argument is not plausible then tell me i'm a rational person i went to university just like you mark when the organizations do the same thing when they want to get rid of you they will fire you without any notice like it's some badge of honor to say oh he's not using this as a stepping stone to go back to kansas what if he was so what if he says i'm using this as a stepping stone so what if coach prom used jackson state as a stepping stone so what we all do this this is what we all do we get somewhere to get started we move on the coaches get fired all the time that's why they call it the coaches carousel because it goes around and around every year somebody's gonna get fired you brought your family to this state you're planted here you do business in this location you go to the grocery stores you buy your groceries here you do everything here and then all of a sudden they say we don't want you no more now you got to go to find a new place to work so they use you but why is it that the organizations can do it but the individuals are not allowed to do the same thing it's okay that i just think it but i shouldn't say it i like the guy that says this is what i'm gonna do x y and z boyo has planted roots and built a foundation that doesn't skirt the rules and doesn't depend on hype videos or the promise of nil riches to build a winner all right so that's weird because coach prom is a proponent of doing the right thing all the time following the rules if they made a mistake like the 11 infractions they will say oh we took a photo that we shouldn't have taken and people have come out to say those 11 infractions were common mistakes that everybody makes right here on this part of it i don't know what mark is trying to reach for but i would like for mark to tell me like what is he saying what rules have coach prime skirted to build nil riches like what did he do all the things that i have read i haven't seen anywhere where coach prime has skirted the rules where coach prime is breaking the rules or going around the rules in order for him to build a winner i don't know that coach prime is a dirty player he makes it his business to put everything on tape so that you can see what he's doing those things that he's not putting on tape nobody has come out to say coach prime is a dirty player nobody has ever come out to say coach prime skirts the rules so i don't know where mark is getting at when he says skirting the rules now does he do hype videos yeah because hype videos work hype videos work whether you want to shame hype videos or not that's on you but it works bruh you have a program that none of the kids want to come to none of the elite players want to come to the jordan seatons don't want to come here so you need hype video the reason why the five stars want to come here in the first place when you don't have the nir initiative to make it happen is because of those hype videos you're mad at the hype video that got jordan seaton here and if he didn't get the jordan seaton then you would be like well he didn't do enough to get jordan seaton like he his name isn't big enough like he needs to do something different if he could not get any of the five stars to come here, you would be writing a different story to say why he's not doing enough, but he's using his platform, his stature, the hype videos to bring in the five stars, but you don't appreciate that. What would you write if he couldn't get any five stars? If he didn't have this type of leverage to bring in the five stars, what would you be writing? <sighs> 
I like to speak with data. I don't like to just call people a hater. I like to have a mature discussion because I like to listen to what they're saying. But this guy right here, he's a pure blooded hater. The approach is the approach. Whether you like him or not, it's effective. He's turned Colorado around. He's brought Colorado back to the national conversation. You don't have to like the approach, but you got to respect it. And then when the winning starts to happen, I wonder what you would say then. Because you can continue to do it the old school way, or you can adapt a new school way of thinking. The NIL is here and it ain't going nowhere. Whether you want to recruit high school students and want to go into homes and do it the old school way or not, you got to recognize that the old school way, just like you said in your own writing, the old school way is struggling and it's dying. So whether you want to get on board with this new school way of doing things, using social media, using hype, understanding there's Zoom, <laughs> now you don't have to go into homes and you can save your school a lot of money. I didn't totally agree with the way that he said it and I don't think that he should have said it the way that he said it, but I I understand why he said what he said. During the pandemic, forced us to use technology to accomplish the same things that we were doing that we couldn't go into homes anymore. It's a new way of doing things. But to always use the old school idea of doing things as if the old school way is way better than the new school way, which is more effective in this new environment, stop shaming the new way of doing things. You can appreciate the old school way of doing things without shaming the person using the new way of doing things. Because it makes you look old and out of touch with reality. The reality is social media is here. It's not going away. So get on board. It's not that we don't appreciate the old way, but when the old way is done, you got to get with the new way. When Blockbuster is no longer there, you got to get with Netflix. There's a lot of old things that we don't do anymore. We don't put tapes in the decks anymore. We stream music now. The old DJs can keep talking about the new DJs using Serato. You can continue to carry a bunch of crates around as an old DJ because you like the way that the records spin and the noise that the records make and that sound is different those heavy crates you can continue to log them around or you can just take your ipad your phone and show up with some headphones and still rock out to millions of people who will appreciate it just the same you can continue to love the old and appreciate the old just the new but just like a lot of celebrities said when social media was here the snoop dogs and everybody else saying i ain't going on no twitter they all have twitter accounts now they all have social media accounts now you have to appreciate the old but you also have to appreciate the new all of the rappers that were talking about singing rappers 50 cent used to talk about ja Rule and how he was singing you were probably one of those people who used to talk about how 50 cent destroyed ja Rule, and he used to be a singing rapper that he wasn't a real rapper he was just a singer but guess what every rapper is singing today i'm gonna let you let that simmer and i'm gonna leave it right there okay